Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. As I was doing the Let's Build a Mission series, it dawned on me that I do not have any controls mapped for the Huey and I need them. Um, so I think, figured this would be kind of a cool time to sort of do another example of RS Mapper and how I use it. Especially since it's gone through a couple of different iterations since my last video. Um, so without further ado, let's do a quick rundown of how it all works. So if, we'll just go to File, Open here. Now this is, I have one DCS World uh, file that will have all of my aircraft in it, okay? And so you can pick the direction or the directory that you want it to exist in. That's not a huge deal, all right? So I've opened up that one. Now the profile I already have for this one is the F-18C Hornet, okay? But we're going to create a new one today. Um, something you can do is you can go to preferences here and you can have tell it to automatically load the last opened file so now I don't have to do that file open every time I launch RS Mapper. Um, the other thing you want to check on real quick is if you go to edit and select devices these are all the devices that uh, RS Mapper is currently detecting um, as a potential controller. Now I only have the ones that I want in the mapper selected so my throttle, my Arduino board that I made and a uh, joystick my uh, Hotas. Okay, and you can rename any of these devices and it will be global so just keep that in mind I don't bother renaming the devices I do rename the buttons which I'll show you so you can come here to joystick and normally this would say button 1, button 2, button 3, button 4 and I'm the one who actually right, you just right click hit change name and type in the name that you want it to be just remember this will be a global change on every profile within this file okay so Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started making one for the Huey. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole control setup. I just want to show you guys a few things. Hopefully, that you'll find useful, um, you know, enough to get you by, to give you an idea on how it works. And you can also hit the show overlay, and it will show you what um, profile you're currently running. And so, in our case, we want to go profile, new profile, and we're going to do UH. 1H Huey, and I know it's called the Iroquois. I just don't feel like writing that. Okay, and so now we're in a new profile, and you can see it's been selected, and you can see it uh, has not changed up there. But if we do this, and then this, now it changes. And where this is cool is one of the things that a button can do here, and this can be any button you want. But one of the options is, so you trigger on a single press, long press, and release. So what this is, is a single press is, if you listen for the keyboard, okay, it's just a, that's a single press. And then a long press is, pressing and holding it. Okay, so this would be an example of your gun trigger when you're firing your machine gun. You'd obviously want that to be a long press, right? Or not a long press, excuse me. Um, long press, sorry, is one second, I believe, one second or more is what's considered a long press in RS Mapper. Uh, the gun trigger would be like repeat and continuous, which I was getting to, which is why I looked at it, so sorry. So back up one second. So you have your short press, which is a tap, long press, which is you holding the key uh, for one second or more and then trigger on release. This is handed for your toggle switches. A lot of your two-stage toggle switches, you know, you have a front and a backwards on your switches, that's it. What it is is in the forward position or typically one position or the other is where the contact is made. So it'd be like um, when the triggers or the switch is forward, you're pushing a button down. And then when you switch the switch back, you're releasing it. And that's what the trigger on release is. Do you want me to do something when you let go of the button? Okay, so you can have it do this. Where this is handy is like a landing gear switch. You know, when you flip the the switch up, you know, you want your landing gear to come up, and that would actually be a tri trigger on single press. And then when you put the switch down or release the button, it brings the landing gear down. Okay, hope that all made sense. Sorry guys, got sort of ahead of myself there for a minute. But anyway, as I brought us into here, one of the other things that you can do is the repeat and continuous. And again, this is where, um, like for example, almost all the aircraft uh, space bar is your um, gun trigger so you would hit spacebar repeat and continuous and that way every time you pull the trigger it holds the spacebar down and you fire your machine guns if not if you just if you did not do this and just hit spacebar you would just get a real quick burp and that's all you get right um, then we can do sequences which we'll talk about before the tutorial is over and then you have the change profile um, and this is where this one comes in really handy if you wanted to map a button, and you could have, for example, where, let me give you an example of where this would be handy first. Where this is handy is if you don't have a lot of buttons to spare. You know, you, you really, you, you don't have a Thrustmaster Warthog. You don't have something that's got, you know, 32 buttons on it. You know, 
and where this would be handy is like you would create two F-18C Hornet profiles, so maybe one for takeoff and landing and navigation, and then another profile where um, for all your combat actions, right? And um, uh, what you would do is bind one button on your um, controllers, just one, where you push the button and it would switch between the two. And you would set that same button up on both profiles. So you'd have Hornet 1 and Hornet 2 on your profiles. You'd have the same button that switches profiles. And you could even name it Hornet Attack, Hornet, you know, whatever, you know, would not be attack. And it would actually say it up here as you switch between the two is where that overlay would come in handy. But what's nice is that by doing it like this is you can take the only 10 buttons that you have and you can make those 10 buttons do really an infinite number of things. You could make five profiles if you need to and have those same 10 buttons do 50 different actions based on what profile you're in and have one button that allows you to toggle between the profiles. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, guys, because it's a really neat feature. Um, I used that a lot before I got my um, all my controls and gizmos and crap. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cancel here. And let's go ahead and get into using it. So I'm going to stay on my joystick. And I'm going to go into the controls. And I'm not going to do everything. Like I said, this will be pretty quick. I just want to show you guys a few things that will hopefully get you rolling. And so let's sort of just scroll down here for a second and look for something that's going to get my attention. There we go, the armament. Let's start there. So the armament safe switch, this is basically your master arm switch for the... Um, uh, Huey, and it's got three positions, um, off, safe, and armed, okay? And basically the, what this is, is you don't want to necessarily pay attention to all three of these positions. You want What you want to pay attention to is what it says at the end, okay? Right shift and open bracket will move this switch forward. Right switch, or a right shift and close bracket will move the ship, or sorry, that'd be the opposite way. We'll move the switch, this will move the switch up, this will move the switch down. Gosh, I can't talk. And so let's, let me show you guys how I would use this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our TMS switch for this. And we're gonna go TMS up is, um, I'm gonna actually put this on the long press. I'll show you why in a minute. So we're gonna do the armament up on this one. So armament switch up. And it is right shift, open bracket, right? Yeah, uh, close bracket, okay. We're gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna find TMS down, long press again, and now we're gonna go the other direction. Armament, oops, switch down, and that's gonna be right shift, open bracket. Okay, and this is the long press, so I have to hold the button down for it to trigger this for one second or more. And once the action is triggered, you can let go. Because it's still going to, once this action is triggered, it's not going to hold it. It's just going to tap that key. Okay, and I'll show you guys how this all looks in a minute. Then what I'm going to use is the armament selector switch up and down. Okay, I'm going to put these on the short press. So this will allow me to switch between the gun and the rockets. So we're going to do uh, weapons, weapons, select, down. And again, that is armament selector right alt and open bracket and let's do the same thing with TMS up weapon select up and that one is right alt and closed bracket alright right, so I'm gonna hit OK I'm gonna hit file and save okay I don't want to uh, lose the sequence and you can see up here at the top if we expand this a little bit, I had it narrow so you guys can see both screens. Um, but you guys can see what the key press is. This is the type, so it's just a real quick tap on the keyboard is what it's saying. Okay, we can see where it is. It's on the joystick for the Warthog. We can see what the action is. Weapon select up, weapon select down, armament up, armament down. And we can see what the button is. Okay, TMS up, TMS down and we can see what the action that we are required to do. Okay, this is, we are required to make a single press. For this one, we're required to make a long press. And there's no repeat. So this isn't, like I said, this is not set up like the gun trigger would be. Okay, all right, so let's go. And these would be if we 
if this button was telling us to go to a new profile and this or if this button was activating a sequence which again we'll get into the sequences later all right so let's bring that back over and now let's get back at it all right and i'll show you guys real quick let's actually just see these in action real fast so the long press i'm gonna take my tms button and i'm gonna press and hold it upwards Bunk. i'm gonna do it again okay see what i mean you don't really need that to be very fast that's just you know you would hopefully arm this before you got into a hot lz but now this button switches between or this switch between the rockets and the guns we want that to be fast right you know you want to be able to rapidly just determine what weapon you're using so anyway that, that gives you guys the idea those were both the same two buttons just one of them i pressed and held it and the other one i just tapped it okay but it saves a lot of buttons so that was two buttons right there to do four commands all right so let's go back and we'll just tap one of those guess back where we were mm. all right so we'll go these autopilots real quick now the uh1 doesn't really have autopilot but you know um it's kind of nice to have for the sim right so we'll go ahead and i'll show you guys how this works and what we're going to do here is map a three stage switch okay so a three stage switch is a switch that sits in the center you can push it forward go and then let go goes back to center and then you can put it to the far rear position and or go back to center so it's got three positions but how the sim and most software reads it is you push it forward you're pushing one button push it back to the center position and what you've done is release that button then you push it to the rear you're pushing a second button okay let go of it or put it back to center and you've let go of the rear button okay so the center position would actually be a release command releasing whatever button was currently depressed so i'll show you guys what that looks like and uh, for those of you, you know, if you guys want to look up a picture of the thrustmaster warthog throttle you guys get an idea what i'm talking about and as long as you do in the bottom right corner there is a path altitude heading and altitude uh, positions for the three position switch and that's what we're going to be using here uh, but first we're going to do this autopilot button which it also has a button right next to that switch which we're going to use and this just activates whatever command we've selected here so we're going to do just autopilot and left control left shift a so left control left shift a is already selected perfect now let's go to path and I'm just going to work my way down as they are here. So attitude, level, and orbit in the back. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is attitude hold. So this is when I take that switch and I push it to the forward position. Left alt, left shift, and A. And then when I let go of it, so it's back in the center position, we want it to be in level flight. So we're going to come over here and do level flight, left control, and A. And hit OK. And then we're going to come back here to the altitude um, position, which is the rear position for that same switch. And in the far rear, we want the orbit. So we're going to do orbit, and that's going to be left, alt, and A. But when we release it, we want it to be back in this middle position. So we want level flight again, just like we did in the last one. And that's going to be left control A. That's it. That's all there is to it. So we've just mapped a three position switch. We just have to make sure that the release section does the same thing on both um, positions. Okay. Okay. So let's keep going for a second. Um, let's see. Would be another fun one for you guys to see here. Um, it does have the detents. So let's try something here, and we'll use our first sequence here. Let me. Find what the throttle is. I don't know. Gotta think about this for a second. Let's see if it has an idle command. I don't think it does. No, it's got circuit breaker. There we go. So this would be throttle up, I believe, is what we would need. Actually, we can use both of these. So if we come over here. For those of you who don't know, the throttle in the Huey is right here. You can see it, throttle. So page up. Yep, that's what we want. Is that left wind T? Oh, no. Right, my question is at the default position because I feel like it's not. Let 
I'm gonna change that for a second. Let's go back into adjust controls. I don't like that one. Huh. It's not even registering that. I hate that. Okay. So let's go back in here and search throttle. I had a feeling it wasn't going to. I've noticed that some keyboards, DCS does not. Oh, it's right when in T. Damn it, did it again. Gosh, I'm retarded. Although I don't think it recognized that either. So that'd be right when T and then page down to set it. Nope, I didn't think so. So let's do this. Let's check and see if it's even registering it. Nope, it's not. All right, good to know. So none of the Windows commands seem to work on my keyboard for this. So what I'm gonna do is just clear that. And let's try something off the wall. Right control T, is there anything there? Fire detector test, I am not worried about that. So we'll just go ahead and pull that off. So right control T. And so now what we should get is if I do right control T, yep, and you can see that button to press this one right here, and go page down. This will actually set the throttle, you know, it's like a, the a throttle cutoff for the, um, uh, any of the jets, you know, how you push a throttle back and then you lift up over the detent and actually kills it, or in some aircraft it's a switch. So all we want, yeah, okay, so we got to figure out at what point the engines will start. That's what I don't remember. So let's try this one more time. We're going to push our button down, just taps it. Okay, so it's right about, that should be enough. So here's what we're going to do. I bet you guys are wondering what the hell this is all about. The reason why I'm trying to figure this out is how long that button needs to be depressed in order for the throttle to come out of lock. So I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my right throttle. I've got it all the way back in the detent position that you can see right here. And we're going to make a sequence for this. So to shut the aircraft down. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to view sequences. You can see I already made one for the Hornet speed brake, but we're going to do something new. This one's going to be a little bit more advanced. And we're going to do Huey throttle off. You know, however you want to name it. You can get all fancy with it. I know what it means. Now, the first thing that we need it to do, right, is the throttle lock. That's that little button that we push. Okay, that's this button right here. That's the throttle lock. And that is right control and T. Now here's where this gets interesting. So delay since start, we don't want to delay. What this is is how long, and this is all in milliseconds, this is how long from the time you push the button do you want me to wait before I actually execute the action? We don't need it to wait. I am going to have it do 80 milliseconds, and the only reason why is sometimes if you tap it too fast, um, and this is just any control, um, sometimes it doesn't quite register. Okay, so now we're going to go to add. And then what we want to do, we want it to do one more thing. Okay, we want it to bring that throttle all the way back. So what we're going to do now is go to new again. And we're going to go to throttle down. And this one's just page down. Oh, that's weird. That is literally cycling through everything. That's kind of weird. Um, so you can just cycle the P's. There we go. Page down. And now we want it to wait. This is a perfect example we want it to wait. We don't want these to execute at the same time. So, and you need to make sure that it waits at least as long as your duration is for the next one. So in this case, I'm just gonna go with 100 milliseconds and we want it to hold. So it's a thousand milliseconds to one full second. So let's try, let's try 1500 milliseconds. That should be enough, I think, to bring it all the way back to idle. So we're going to go just like that. So we got two commands here that's going to happen. And we just hit oh, close when we're done. Okay. And we go back to our throttle, the right detent. And we want this to be engine cutoff, so we'll call it. Cut -off, cut -off. And we're not going to do a key press. We're, we're going to do a key press sequence. So when we push a button, this sequence is going to activate. Okay, and this will be our right detent. And so I'm going to pull it out of the detent. Okay, apparently I already have this mapped. I totally do. All right, so there's my throttle all the way back. Actually, I guess I should have mapped it over there, huh? Oh, give me a second. Let's just do that. That makes way more sense. 
Because what I'm messing with right now is the collective. I don't want it on the collective detent. That doesn't make sense. So let's just, I'm going to copy this so I don't have to retype it. We're just going to untrigger that. Hit OK. Go to the left detent. Trigger on single press. Copy that in. Oops. There we go. Key press. QB throttle off. Here we go. File. Save. Come back here. Okay. Put the collective all the way down. Okay. We got our throttle open. And then what I'm going to do now is put it into the detent position. And I think that's it. Yeah. The throttle cannot move down anymore. So that was perfect. And then what we're going to set to do now is just move, when we move the move it out of the detent, all we need, I think we just tap it. Let me check. Nope. It's got to have a deep press. So we're going to come back in here. Now, if we go to the left detent, we go to release. You can repeat it X number of times, but that's not as effective as creating another sequence. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to go to sequences again, view sequences. We're going to go new uh, throttle to idle. And I'm going to put ish <laughs> because I don't think we're going to be quite on idle. We'll probably be a little bit higher. But all we're going to need for this one, this one's really easy. Um, throttle forward. And we're just going to be using the page up button. I'm just using, tapping P on the keyboard to find it. Okay, page up. And we want the duration on this one. I guess what? We'll, let's try a thousand, one full second, and see if that gets us what we need. And then again, just close. And find left detent. Trigger on release. Engine idle. Sequence. Throttle idle ish. File, save, come back here, put it back in the detent, and that didn't work real well. Well, maybe it did. And then pull it out of the detent. Okay, so the cool part is, yes, that was a little extreme, I, if you guys saw it, so we'll go back one more time, make sure everything works. Uh, it didn't lock it. Okay, so you got to give it a second. So this is what I'm talking about. If they happen too fast, so you don't have to worry about, you know, how long you set the throttle forward to because what happened is, you know, you, you always come forward a little bit and DCS recognized that with the axis. So as soon as I came out of the detent, I obviously didn't go 100% just over the hump. I went forward a little bit. DCS caught it, and so then when I throttled it back, it went back to its position. Okay, so this is about... Actually, it's a pretty good success rate. Never mind. We won't worry about it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that back into the idle position. So there. You guys saw sort of how the sequences work there. That's pretty good. So I hope you guys catch the gist of it. Okay. Um, I, I don't think I need to show you guys a whole lot else that's really required here. Um, so you've seen how the sequences work. Um, again, just sort of going over it real quick because I know it's been kind of tricky. You can have multiple actions. The biggest thing is watch your durations. If you find that a keystroke isn't happening or it's not happening long enough, you want to increase the duration. 1,000 milliseconds equals one full second. If you have a command following another command, you need to make sure that you have a delayed start that is always higher than what the total number of durations are. So, for example, if we were to have a third command here, it would need to wait more than 180 milliseconds before we wanted to actually, excuse me, it would have to be these numbers plus these. Okay, so our next command would have to be uh, longer than 1680 milliseconds. Okay, and you, hopefully you guys see why we're getting that. The first button, we're holding it down for 80 milliseconds. We wait 100 milliseconds for the second command. The second command has to be held down for 1500 milliseconds, which is how we're getting to 1600 milliseconds. 1680 milliseconds have expired so far which means if we were to have a third command it would have to wait at least that long before we execute it, otherwise they'll step on each other 
okay? Um, if, let me know if you guys need any help with any of this. I'll be happy to go over it in further detail. It, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, so you guys got to see the short press, long press. Um, I discussed about how the overlays work and how you can use a button to switch profiles. So again, you know, if I ever to right now, if I want to create a UH1 Huey 2, you know, I could do that and it would make all these buttons do something completely different. So this is really handy for those of you who are limited on controls or just don't like having a whole bunch of them. Okay. I am going to hide that though because it drives me nuts. Um, but anyway, um, again, questions, comments, always feel below. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, guys, and I will see you guys in the next one, which will be very, very soon. Bye-bye.